OK, welcome back. 24 minutes past seven. Labor leader Andrew Little says young Kiwis are struggling with record mortgage debt and the government needs to start building affordable homes. The Reserve Bank has released new data showing loans from first home buyers. The amount they've borrowed has jumped 43% in just two years. Joining me now from the New Zealand Initiative is Executive Director Oliver Hartwich. Good day, Oliver. Uh, Good morning. This, you're, uh, you're at one with the Labor Party leader on this, aren't you? Uh, pretty much so, because I agree with Andrew Little, we have a first-time buyer's crisis. In fact, I would go further than that. I think we've got a housing market crisis full stop. This is just a symptom of a wider crisis. Housing in New Zealand has become completely unaffordable. Unfortunately, the housing ladder has lost its bottom rungs. So Andrew Little is completely right. We have made it way too, exp too expensive for first-time buyers to enter the market. But to be fair, we've probably known this for a couple of years now. I mean, we've seen this. We've even keeps talking about it. It's unaffordable. It's a crisis. The what can be done to actually solve it? Well, we have known this for a couple of years, but over the last couple of years it has become a lot worse. Andrew Little pointed out that the average first-time buyer now has to pay $390,000 or actually take a mortgage of $390,000. That's up more than $100,000 from just a couple of years ago. So while we were talking about the housing market crisis, it has become a lot worse. And if you're looking at these first-time buyers, they now have to spend on average about $300 more per fortnight repaying that mortgage because of our housing affordability crisis. So what we need to do now now is actually to fix the roots of that crisis and that basically means to supply the market with the houses that we need. So it's supply and demand. Increase the supply and meet the demand. It is economics 101. If you've got something with limited supply and constant demand, prices will go up and that's exactly what we're seeing in the New Zealand housing market. Okay, that's we're the solution. Not supplying the market. Okay, that's the solution. Why isn't it happening? Uh, because probably there is not enough political will at the moment to do some really tough reforms. Because what we need to do are a few things at once. We have to deregulate the planning laws. That means we have to get rid of height and density controls. We have to get rid of the rural urban boundary. We have to make it a lot easier for councils to develop the infrastructure that is needed to accommodate new development. And that means, for example, taking some infrastructure off council's balance sheets. There are new and novel ways of doing that. And uh, you just have to look at the United States where they're doing it already in municipal utility districts. So we could do that. And on top of that, we probably have to provide some incentives to councils to actually go into development and be more positive about it. Just imagine what would happen if we gave the GSD component of new development to councils, what that would do to councils' attitudes to actually uh, speed up development. So we can solve the housing crisis, but it takes tough political actions. OK, just finally, if we don't do anything, what happens then? If we don't do anything, we will just continue the trend of the past few years. We will make it more and more unaffordable for first-time buyers particularly. We will see a fragmentation of societies into a society that consists of homeowners on the one hand and non-owners who will never have a chance to enter the housing market and get the kind of accommodation that their parents once took for granted. Oliver Hardwich, appreciate your analysis on this this morning. Of course, uh, Oliver is the New Zealand Initiative Executive Director. And just ahead this